Hey everybody, I wanted to talk about this camera that I've got here. Uh, this is a camera that's been in my family for quite some time. I found the camera at my grandfather's house, and my understanding of the story is that uh, it was purchased by my great-grandfather as a wedding gift for my grandfather. Um, not sure about that, but what I do know is that the camera was made in 1939 uh, by the Graphics Corporation, and that it's a miniature speed graphic camera. So, miniature means that it's a smaller form factor and uses a smaller film. Uh, which is a little less desirable as far as these cameras go. The uh, 4x5 is uh, still a common format. However, 2 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter uh, film is obsolete, so don't see these cameras used a whole lot. There are some that have rollbacks that um, people can use modern film on. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those. I have a spring back, uh, which requires uh, insertion of the film uh, behind the ground glass here. Um, so what I want to talk about today is uh, how I've been able to use Fuji Instax mini film uh, in this camera and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that um, so uh, let's get started okay so here I have a pack of Fuji Instax mini uh, with the cover still on this isn't actually a new pack I wouldn't uh, waste an uh, entire uh, pack of film just to show you this um, so what I've done is kind of recreated uh, what it looks like uh, as a new pack so I've got the cover in here um, and some film underneath and so I'm going to show you how to load that into the um, Graflex film holder here. Um, so obviously all of this has to be done in the dark but um, that doesn't make for a very interesting video so we're going to do this in the light and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, just uh, keep in mind um, it's a little trickier to do without light but um, it's really not too bad. Um, and uh, one thing you could potentially do is just kind of practice like this in the, in the light and then uh, be a little bit easier to do in a dark room or changing bag. Um, so the first step is to uh, do exactly what this thing says not to do and it says do not press here. So we're going to press here, press down a little bit and then force out this plastic layer. Um, with the new pack it's going to be a little bit harder so I had to, I think, I think I had to push it a little bit harder to make this thing start coming out. Um, so we're just going to take that and get it out of the way. Um, and then, so what you'll see here is um, an unexposed um, layer of film. Uh, this one's actually exposed, but uh, just if it was a new pack, this would obviously be unexposed. Um, so what we're going to do is do what we just did, and we're going to push this piece of film out. Um, it's just going to slide out one end. Um, and what I'm doing on the back side here, uh, you probably won't have to do it quite as much with the new roll of film, but there are these uh, springs kind of interior in the interior of the film pack that kind of push the, the film forward, push it towards the front or the top of the film pack, which is where the, the slot that the film comes out uh, is. So I'm just kind of pushing up to, to line up the film with that slot. So anyway, you're just going to push this out. Um, you can set that aside and then my film holder here holds two sheets, so I'm going to do two sheets. And just for reference, just note how it comes out. Um, you'll see there's a large uh, developer packet on one end, um, and it may be a small packet on the other end. Not real sure uh, if there's developer in there or not. Um, so regardless, um, next step is to uh, get our film holder ready here. And so I'm going to pull the dark slide back, and I like to pull it um, pretty much entirely out of the way. Sometimes I just take it out entirely. Um, some people use one side or the other. You can see this is a silver side and this one's been um, coated with something black. Uh, some people use that as a system to determine whether or not they've exposed a piece of film or not. Um, I haven't really got that far yet. Um, so you might have to, if you're, if you're one of those people, I guess you would uh, only partially remove the slide, just get it out of the way, which is fine too. doesn't really matter. Um, so the next step is to insert the film. Um, one thing to consider is the orientation of the film within the camera. When I take a picture um, in the vertical format on my camera, I want the um, top frame, you see this is an exposed film here, um, I want the top frame to be at the top of the film. I don't want it to be upside down, which actually this one is, so I messed it up. So that's a lesson I learned the hard way. Um, so I want this top portion to be at the top of the um, film holder. So what I'm going to do is just uh, pull this back. Uh, this is a little bit 
uh, little kind of hinge here uh, that holds the dark slide in place at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to pull that back and just insert the film. There's rails on either side and one at the back. So just kind of try to keep the film under the rails. And just because of the size of the film, it fits quite nicely. So uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, one thing I want to do is make sure that I've got it all the way uh, to the top, if possible. Um, that's pretty much it. It's in there. So I'm going to fold this little hinge down and close the dark slide. That one's ready to go. So we'll just uh, repeat on the other side here. Um, pretty easy. Let's see if we can do this one a little quicker. Um, of course, it's a little easier to do in the light than it is in the dark, so it might take a little longer in a changing bag or whatever. Um, one thing to consider is um, the front of the film can tend to get a little bit scratched from uh, inserting the film and pulling it out, so try not to scratch it too much. Um, uh, if you're worried about that, I'm not too terribly worried about that. This is a uh, kind of fast and loose photography here, so we're just uh, making do with what we got. So that's it. Got the film loaded. Um, ready to take some pictures with it. Okay, so I've got my speed graphic set up here. I'm going to take a picture of this uh, little red wind chime that I've got here. Um, the first thing I need to do is figure out what the exposure I need is. Um, so I've got my Nikon digital SLR here that I'm essentially going to use as a light meter. Um, I've set the ISO to 800, which is the ISO of the uh, Fuji Instax film. Um, and then I've also set my aperture to 4.5, which happens to match the uh, maximum aperture and the aperture I'm going to use for this photo. Um, the 4.5 is the maximum aperture of the uh, lens that I've got here. So. Um, so I'm just going to take a quick meter reading and figure out what shutter speed I need to use. And it looks like it's going to be about uh, 1 80th of a second. Uh, so that's what we're going to use going forward. So I'm just going to set this down. So before I can set the exposure for photo, uh, I'm going to have to do some focusing first. So the reason I have to do that is um, the lens uh, it's currently set to the timer setting, the T setting, um, so that I can uh, use the, the ground glass in the back for focusing. So I'm going to do that and make sure my focus is correct. It's a little tricky without a uh, kind of cover and things. It's a little harder to see the ground glass in daylight. Okay, so I've got my focus adjusted. Now I can close the shutter here uh, in the front, so the ground glass image will be blank now. I won't be able to see anything. Um, and then I will set the exposure on the front, so I'm going to walk around and do that. So to close it, I'll just trigger this up here on the lens. And then I'm going to set the exposure value. camera doesn't actually have 1 80th of a second. Uh, it has a dial with some, some demarcations on it here. Uh, one is 100 and one is 50. Um, so I'm going to tend to wanna overexpose by just a little. Um, just because of the nature of the film that seems to work okay. So I'm going to go with just a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker than 1 50th of a second. So I'm going to have to cock the shutter. So, as far as the shutter goes, we're ready to go. I've got the aperture set to uh, 4.5. Shutter speed set to about uh, a little faster than 1 50th of a second. Um, so that's ready to go. So the next step, I can no longer see out of the ground glass, uh, but I do have my film holder here marked which side I've got unexposed film in. Um, just made a note that it is unex uh, unexposed. So I'm going to insert the film holder between the ground glass and the camera, like so. Kind of locks into place. Um, so next step is to remove the dark slide, and we're going to do the exposure here. We're going to trigger the shutter. So here it goes. We're taking a picture. And that was it. I have to reinsert the dark slide. 
this, flip it around on the other side. We're going to take two photos just, to, just for the sake of doing this. And remove the dark side. Actually, I think before I do that, I want to cock the shutter just in case as I'm cocking the shutter, there's any light leaks or anything. I'm not real sure. It's an old camera. The shutter's not in great shape. So I'm going to go ahead and cock the shutter. Actually, I'm going to adjust the exposure a little bit since I'm taking two. Might as well uh, at least get one that I'm happy with. So I'm going to bump up the speed on this one. So this should be about one one hundredth of a second. So shutter's cocked and ready to go. I'm going to remove the dark light again and trigger the shutter. Replace the dark slide. So now we have two pieces of exposed Fuji and Sex Mini. Uh, so we're going to go back inside and we're going to process these in camera. I'm going to show you how to do that.